shall prosper Every tongue that rise against me is condemned Jehovah lives in me Jehovah lives in me No weapon say no
Come on, raise your worship right now. Jehovah is in me. Kaya ba shana la ba ha. No weapon formed against me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me is condemned. Jehovah is in me. service from Psalm 66, our first Thanksgiving session, Psalm 66 from verse 1 down to 5. Psalm 66 from verse 1 down to 5. If you have your Bibles, please open that so we can read together. Psalm 66 from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 66 from verse 1 to 5. All right, we have it on the screen. So I want you to let us read together. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing to all the children of men. Hallelujah. Let's begin to give get thanks to God tonight. There are ten thanksgiving points in this place let's give him thanks and praise in that thanksgiving says for the month of june let's say father we thank you for the gift of life thank you for another opportunity to see a brand new month thank you for keeping us from all evil thank you father for every member of our biological and church family we give you thanks and praise for your faithfulness over them all thank you father for the privilege to gather again as a church even in this seed form we thank you, Father, for the normalcy that is gradually being restored to our world. We give you thanks and praise for helping us to live victoriously rather over this pandemic. We thank you, precious Father, for causing all things to work in our favor. We give you praise and glory because we are receiving in abundance flow a harvest of testimonies. We thank you, Father, for keeping our hearts in perfect peace through everything. We glorify your name tonight as a church, as one people, because you keep us. Because indeed, you've proven, even yet again, that you are the shepherd of our souls. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. We exalt you, Father. Are you giving him thanks in this place tonight? Let's give him thanks as a church and as one people that he is faithful. Let's give him thanks for that opportunity to see another month and to spend that month in his presence tonight. Let's give him praise and glory because it is he that has helped us to stand here together tonight as one people to glorify his name. Let's magnify his name and thank him for keeping us through all the experience of the pandemic. Thank him for your family members far and wide, far and near. Give him praise and glory and exalt him and say thank you, Father, because you are faithful, because you are good. We give you thanks and praise for preserving us, for keeping us all together. Thank you, Father, for how you strengthened us through all the experience. Thank you, Lord, because your peace yet rules and reigns in our lives and in our families. We glorify your name for the normalcy that's beginning to be restored to our world. We thank you for the lessons we've learned through this whole experience and how that you have strengthened us through and through. We glorify your name because you are faithful and you are to be praised forever and ever. Blessed be your name, O oh God. All the praise and all the adoration be unto your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody forgive me. Not a shout.
Bye. 
It's a new day, it's a new dawn, and we're all excited. It's Thanksgiving as well. Be blessed as you listen to the following testimonies. I used to believe that it's big testimonies I should share. That's why I've been feeling so reluctant to share my testimony. But Peace One is always saying to us, share your testimony no matter how small. I woke up with a terrible waist pain on Thursday morning. On Friday, it became worse that I was afraid. The Friday midnight prayer, that same Friday midnight prayer, Peace On mentioned waist pain gone. And I felt cool on my waist immediately. I woke up in the morning not feeling the waist pain, and I was wowed, no waist pain again. And I said, thank you, Jesus, for healing me. I laughed, I smiled, and I was feeling so good in my body. I've come to give thanks to God Almighty for his goodness in my life. Praise the Lord. The next testimony. I joined the Holy Hill Midnight Prayer on Thursday night. You prayed and, referring to peace on now, you prayed and mentioned my case. I had a pain in my chest that had been there for two days. When I woke up in the morning, the pain disappeared. No pain till today. Praise the Lord. We continue to see the goodness of God in our lives. Please key into these testimonies. Trust God that this will happen for you as well. And um, let's thank God for the people that have also testified. If you have a testimony to give, please send your testimonies to testimony at Holy Hill the Church or the WhatsApp number displayed on the screen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet as we just continue thanking God. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible to the book of Psalm 89. I want to read towards the first five verses. Psalm 89 from verse 1. It says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to my servant David. Your seed I will establish forever and build up your throne to all generations. Verse 5. And the heavens will praise your wonders, O Lord. Your faithfulness also in the assembly of the saints. Hallelujah. I want us to just begin to thank God this morning. Just begin to give him thanks for his faithfulness over our lives. Let's begin to give him thanks. Let's begin to exalt his name for his love that never fails and for his mercies everlasting. Let's thank him. Let's thank him for the dawning of a new day for us as a church. Let's thank him for frustrating the plans of the enemy concerning us. Let's thank him for causing us to triumph in all things. Give him praise and glory. Just lift your voice and just magnify him for all the healings and the mighty deliverance. That all the mighty deliverances and the healings. Let's thank him for opening to us doors. New doors this season. Let's thank him for prospering us in farming. Let's thank him for all round restoration, for restoring to us anything that we have lost this season. Let's thank you for ordering our steps aright this season. Lift your voice and just give him praise. Just magnify the Lord with me this morning. Just worship him, exalt him, give him thanks. Lord, we exalt you. We magnify you. Thank you because it's a new day for us. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you for your love that never fails. Thank you for frustrating every plan of the enemy concerning us. Thank you for causing us to triumph in all things. Thank you for all the healings, the mighty works, the mighty deliverances that you've granted to us, O oh God. Thank you for opening to us new doors. Thank you for opening to us new doors. Thank you for prospering us in farming. Thank you because when men are saying there's a casting down, we will rise and say there's a lifting up for us. Thank you for restoring us on all sides, on every side. Thank you for restoring us. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Thank you for guiding and directing our steps. We exalt your holy name. We magnify your name. Receive our praise this morning. Receive all the glory and honor. Receive all the adoration. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Imela, Imela, O Kaka, Imela, Imela, 
generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts and I will declare thy greatness. I want you to just go ahead this morning and just lift up your voice to heaven and give him praise, give him glory, give him thanks. Let's thank him for this glorious service this first service in the month of June Father we give you glory, we give you praise thank you for the testimony of the blood in our lives we thank you for divine exemption and preservation we thank you for your peace that passes all understanding we thank you for restoring homes and marriages threatened by the forces of darkness thank you for healing Thank you for emotional healing, healing of hearts, healing of pains and restoring hearts that are broken. Thank you for putting a new song in our, in our mouth, even a song of victory in our lips. Thank you for the honor given to us to execute the judgment written. Thank you for answering us whenever we call. We bless your name tonight. Thank you for helping us maximize the increase and the opportunity that these seasons bring. Thank you for not allowing our supplies to run dry. We bless your name tonight. We bless your name in this place this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Take all the glory, take all the praise. Take all the glory, take all the praise. It belongs to you and you alone. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father peace in Jesus mighty name hallelujah come on lift your voice and just worship him this morning father we give you all the glory father we worship you ancient of days you never change Yeah. 
quickly, I want to dedicate um, how many babies here? Four babies? Six babies. It's, let's have their pictures up on the screen. You may be seated. Um, let's have their pictures up, the six babies we are dedicating. So we're dedicating Anoluakwa Joyful Richmond. She was born in January. Happy dedication to Mokoride Imisi Imisi Re Oluwa Bamidele. Just put up the names quickly, quickly, quickly. Axis Studio Kechubweze. Dade Idegbe Dagbe Ogene Shidum Imafidon. Dada Lilian Tuluani, Ariela Chimerim Cosmos. Is that all? All right, so those are the babies that were born before and um, the lockdown, and we didn't have time to dedicate them, but we wanted to dedicate them virtually this, this morning. And I declare over every one of them that they are blessed of the Lord. I dedicate these babies in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father, of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit, God, God's crown of glory is upon your head. Your eyes see well. Your heart is, is an heart of understanding. Your hands are blessed of the Lord. They are made strong by the hands of the Almighty God. The hand of God is upon, your, upon you, and the same hand is upon the necks of your enemies. Your feet are anointed, and your steps are ordered by the Lord. Your body will not be burnt. Your, body will not, your bones will not be broken. Your blood will not be spilled on the highways of life. No surgical blade will touch your body. You will be greater than your parents, and great is your peace. You will be taught of the Lord. You will not die before your time. Your parents will not bury you. With long life, you are satisfied, and you will see your children's children. Through you, your family is blessed. The body of Christ on the earth is blessed. The kingdom of God is advanced. Indeed, all the nations of the earth will call you blessed. Your smell is like the smell of the feet that the Lord has blessed. You grow in wisdom. You grow in strength, you grow in stature, favor with God and with men. All the days of your life, you will see the goodness of God in Jesus' mighty name. Welcome to the beloved. Welcome to the family of God. All the good things that this kingdom represents, they find expression in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Once again, let's be on our feet as we just give God thanks for making us see a brand new month. And let's prepare our thanksgiving offerings. Let's prepare our thanksgiving offerings. And um, you are encouraged to, to give electronically. But if you have your envelope, you just put it inside the envelope. After the service, on your way out, through this door here, there will be, there'll be somebody there with a basket. You just drop the, off, the offering inside the basket. Is that okay? So let's put together our, our thanksgiving offerings right now. Let's put them together. And just lift up our hands to heaven. As we begin to give God praise, let's give him thanks for the month of January, for the month of February, for the month of March, for April, for May, for June, and now for this glorious month of June. Let's thank him for seeing us through. Let's thank him for preserving our lives. Let's thank him for his mighty hand that is upon us for good. Father, we give you all the glory. We ask that you take all the praise. We appreciate you this morning, mighty God. Open your mouth this morning. Lift up your voice to heaven and give him thanks. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. There is none like you. There is none to be compared unto you. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Blessed be your name. We can never thank you enough. We can never bless you enough. We appreciate you from the depths of our hearts. Take all the glory, God. Take all the praise, God. It belongs to you and you alone. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. Father, Lord, as a church, we have gathered before you this glorious day, this first day that you're allowing churches to come back together. We ask that you take all the praise. Have your way in the service. Let your hand be strong upon us like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. You can give your thanksgiving offering. Um, those of us attending the service, give your thanksgiving offering. And um, let's just give God thanks. And it's very good to, to, to finally have people um, with me in the service. I know most of you are still. Um, are you excited? Yeah, um, so this is, this is going to be the new normal for at least for a while. This will also pass. Is that okay? 
Praise the name of the Lord. And this is a new month, and um, typical of us, every new month, to bring a new message. Um, the same old gospel, but a different line of thought. And we'll be looking at the perfect laws of breakthrough. Throughout the course of this month of June, we'll be considering the subject of the perfect laws of breakthrough. Let's start out from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And when you begin to consider the things to understand, of the many things you need to understand in this life, there is nothing that has more color, there is nothing that has more value. There is nothing among the many things you need to understand that has more splendor, more glory, more prosperity and peace to the life of a man than a perfect understanding of the, law, of the governing laws of the universe. There are governing laws that, runs, that govern things in this universe. Some of them are scientific in nature. And when people understand these laws, they make advancement in engineering. These laws are there to be discovered. They are there to be applied in our lives. There are some of these laws are biological in nature. Some of them are, um, they, they are, they are, they are, they are radioactive in nature. You know, um, there are laws of chemistry, of biology, of technology. There are laws of economics that people have come to understand and appreciate and they've applied them in their lives to make progress. But when it comes to the governing laws of the universe, if you understand these laws and apply them in your life, the understanding of other laws will become stronger in your life. There are people who make progress in, in politics. They understand politics. They understand political science. Because politics is a science. There are laws that govern politics. Not everybody understands the laws of politics, but some people understand the law of politics, but they don't understand the laws of life. So they can succeed in politics, and because they violate the governing laws of the universe, they can make a shipwreck of their lives. If you look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible is very clear there in Joshua 1 8. Say this book of the law. The Bible is called the book of the law. It's not the Ten Commandments. The law that you're supposed to pay attention to in the Bible is not the Ten Commandments. The governing laws of the universe, the Ten Commandments is just one aspect of these laws. But there are other laws that govern things in, this, in the universe. We are charged to understand the spiritual laws that govern the universe by continually studying the Bible. The more you study the Bible, the more you discover the governing laws of the universe. The Bible contains the laws of the spirit of life. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 8, Ro sorry, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, I beg your pardon. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. If any man be in Christ Jesus, there are laws that are activated in his life that sets him free from the laws of, the, of, of sin and death. There are governing laws there within the faith. The Bible contains the laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. There are laws in Christ Jesus. There are laws in the marketplace. There are laws of aerodynamics. There are laws of economics. 
You know, most times I, 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 when, when, there is, when there is a lot of economic uncertainty, I like having discussion with Paul Elijah, one of the economists, in, in, one of the leading economists in this country, who happens to be a member of our church, I ask him, what's going on? He will now begin to explain to me, you know, the, the, the laws driving, why he will tell you that this is going to happen because of certain laws that he understands. They don't invite me to CNN or Al Jazeera to come and talk about economics. Because I don't understand. I took some courses in economics, but I'm not a master of the laws of economics. The same thing too in Christ Jesus, there are laws that set free from death, from sin, from diseases, from poverty, from shame. The more you know these laws, the freer you become. The more you know these laws, the more glorious your life becomes. In Christ Jesus, you must know and operate the laws. It is one thing to know the laws. It's another thing to apply the laws. It is one thing to know these laws. It's another thing to apply them in your life. You know, I've always been fascinated by the aircraft. The first time I flew... I knew I'm going to own an aircraft, no matter how small. And owning an aircraft is not a luxury. Cars used to be a luxury before there are no more luxuries. So owning an aircraft, the first time I flew in an aircraft, I knew I'm going to own one. I'm not going to use church money to buy it. So don't be afraid I will use church offering to buy it. I'm going to own one. Maybe they will give me as a gift or something. I desire to own an aircraft. First time I entered the aircraft, I, I just started reading more about the aircraft. And, and I, I came to an, an understanding that the first time man flew in an aircraft, it was not an accident. It was a product of research. Years of research, painstaking research by the Wright brothers, who, whose fathers happened to be a, my colleague in the, in, in the ministry. Their father was a pastor. So that's when I know that my children will go on to do big things. So they kept on studying and reading about the laws of aerodynamics. And before these boys, they, they, because if you, if you study, if you can take time to look at that yourself on Wikipedia and all that. You see, there are three laws that are engaged, that are activated, that makes a plane to fly. They discover the third one. Other people have studied and studied and they have established two of those laws. But applying those two laws didn't make the team fly. So they had a conference somewhere in Lisbon and they came to a conclusion that anything heavier than air can fly. Because before that time, anything lighter than air flies, like helium flies. So they said, no, anything that is heavier than air cannot fly. But the right brothers didn't attend that conference. So they kept them studying and they discovered the third leg immediately they apply that third leg, the aircraft took off. Anytime you see the aircraft flying, it is the deliberate application of existing laws in nature. The governing laws of breakthrough must be understood the way the scientists and engineers understand the laws of aerodynamics. There was this movie that we saw. Some people saw something fall from the sky and they started worshipping it. You know, those bushmen, they saw something fall from the sky and they started worshipping it. They started worshipping it. Unknown to them, some people elsewhere in the West were the ones that engineered it and it took off. Before the white men came, anything that falls from heaven is from, anything that falls from the sky is from heaven. The discovery and the application of the laws of aerodynamics was what enabled the first machine to fly. Anytime you see a man flying high in any area of life, particularly in this kingdom, the man has taken delivery of certain laws that they understand and they apply continuously and deliberately. These laws must be known and applied on purpose.
the perfect laws of breakthrough, they are like the laws of aerodynamics. They are the governing laws that powers men, the power ministries, Christian businesses and nations to higher heights. The laws of breakthroughs must be known and they must be engaged on purpose. It is not only for you to know them, but you must apply them within your life. And in the next few days, the next few weeks that we have, we are going to unbundle some of these laws. But tonight, this morning, I want us to just look at the first of these many laws. The first of these laws is the law of honor. The law of honor. In Joshua chapter, in John chapter 5, verse 23. John chapter 5, verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father who hath sent him. You start out engaging the laws, the governing laws of life, by firstly understanding the law of honor. And in, in starting out engaging the law of honor, you start out by understanding that, on the, that you must you start out by honoring God. Not only the Father, you must also honor the Son. He said, those that honor me, I will honor. Now let me tell you something. When you see a man who has broken through in life, the first thing that you can that you that is evident in his life is that they are honorable people. I don't think you are hearing me. When a man has broken through in life, one thing that is consistent with them is that they are people of honor. They are usually people of honor. So when you're looking at breakthrough, one of the things you see there is honor. Inside the breakthrough is honor. Without honor, breakthrough is impossible. Without understanding the law, the law of honor, you cannot experience breakthrough in life. And the first thing you must understand when it comes to the law of honor is that you start out by honoring God. You start out by honoring God. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9, he said, Thou shalt honor the Lord your God with your substance. When it comes to the honor of God, it is seen Firstly, in the way you approach, the, the, you, the, 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 does, does God have a say when it comes to your, to your substance? Because when, when, I don't know what, when, when you hear breakthrough, I don't know what comes to your mind. But what comes to my mind when I hear breakthrough is financial rest. Financial rest, you know, you've succeeded in something that you are aspiring to do. And that success must have money inside. Am I speaking to you? Does that explain what you call breakthrough? When I say somebody has broken through in ministry, what it means is that it's not only that the church is large, the person is large. I was flying once with a pastor from Dubai. He went to the business class. He went to the first class. I saw his ticket with his wife. Me, I went to the economy. He has broken through in ministry. Then even he, if he stands by himself other people, he would think that he has never started. But those ones, they go in their own private jet. And when you, when you begin to investigate people like that, you will see that when it comes to God and money, God is first. They honor the Lord their God with their substance. Proverbs 3 verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. God must have a say when it comes to your finances. Your substance, talk about your money. You honor the Lord your God with your tithes. You honor the Lord your God with your offerings. I can't say more than that. Number two, you honor the word of God. 
I, I think if I'm going to even re rewrite this now, I'll put, I'll put this one as number one. In Psalm 138 verse 2, Psalm 138 verse 2, say, I will worship, I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. When it comes to honor, the word of God must be honored in your life. Jesus must be honored. The Father must be honored. The way you honor the Father is to honor his words. When I write a check to my bank, they honor it because of my signature, because of my name. When I tell you, come and see me in my house. You know, when I call, he said, come and see. There was, some, there was someone that was, was angry with because of some things that happened in church. So I asked him to come and see me. He said he was coming. He didn't come. Until after one week again, I sent him to call him. He didn't come. So eventually he came. I said, don't you know that is a sign of dishonor? For your pastor to ask you to come and you refuse. Or he said he didn't realize. I said it is a mark of dishonor. It is, it is the height of dishonor when, when you don't honor the word of God. The written one or the spoken one. There are times God can tell you to do some things. And I, you know when you listen to Pastor God, you, you begin to understand that the most powerful interventions that God will have in your life, they are those private thoughts. That enters your heart in the place of prayer. Do this. Don't do this. Go and call that person. Go and do this. Simple instructions. When you don't all know those things, you cannot experience breakthrough in life. Massive breakthroughs come from relationship with people. It begins with you honoring the word of God. Those, those personal commandments. Let me tell you guys something. There was an instruction God gave to me in the year 2000. In the year 2000. I ran with that instruction. What am I saying? It was not the year 2000. It was the year 1998. I ran with that instruction from 1998 to 2001. Then I got into the university and got busy, started working. I stopped. Since 2001, it was in this, during this lockdown that when I was praying, God told me, he said, a lot of things are not happening in your life, and the reason why you say be healed and nothing happened is because the last instruction I gave you in the year 1998, you, you stopped it in the year 2000. He said, because you don't honor my instructions, I will not honor your words. I'm not talking about what's written in the Bible. What it taught me privately to practice inside my own life. So while we're praying during the lockdown and all that, then I told my wife that this is what God told me. He said, this is the thing that is like, you know, like, you know, when you build a house and you hang a door, then one of the inch now you just removed. You know the door will not lock. You will be man, you know something is not right, but you raise it and push it. But you, until you go and fix that inch, the door will not work. There are certain instructions in your life that is stopping the mighty hand of God of showing up in your life. Because you dishonor a standing order. That is not an instruction, a one-off. It's a standing order. Immediately I went back there. Bam! Miracles started happening. Dr. Sonny is here. He knows the way we used to see miracles as boys. The ones you guys are seeing online, there are no miracles yet. You see, you dead will start, you start, you start seeing here that the dead will be coming back to life. It is not because, because I have understood that once you honor him, he will honor you. You, you, you honor him by honoring his words. The written one and the private instructions is given to you there. The word of God, you honor the word of God in your life by hearing it, by believing it, by declaring it, and by obeying it. John chapter 2 verse 5. Say whatsoever he says to you, do it. John chapter 2 
Verse 5. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. That is how they turn water to wine. You don't turn water to wine if you do not take, if you don't honor the word of God. Number three, when it comes to the law of honor, you must honor your father and your mother. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3, Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord has given unto thee. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for it is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that he may be well with you, that you may have breakthroughs, and that thou will live long on the face of the earth. There are some things that can never happen for you, except you have put honor for your father and your mother. This is one of the forces that powers increase and breakthroughs in life. Number four, honor all men. Whether they are prince or they are paupers. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 17 is one of my code for living. Honor all men. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 17. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. You honor all men. You honor the king. You honor all men, you honor the king, you honor people no matter who they are. Let me tell you some things. Most of the things you are praying for, they will come from people. If you don't honor them, you shut doors against yourself. What am I saying to you? 99% of the things that God will do for you, will do through people. Dishonor destroys favor. When you don't honor people, you will not experience favor. When you honor people, favor will follow you. It is favor that diminish, that destroys labor and provokes breakthroughs. Number five. Unto men of God, to elders, you give double honor. Say, give double honor to the elders that rule well. Especially they will labor in the word and in doctrine. See, give double honor to the elders that rule well, especially they who labor in the world and in doctrine. Look, you, will, you are destroying, you will shut the heavens over yourself when you dishonor a man of God. Particularly the one that rules well. You see there, said the ones that rule well. The one that does not rule well will, will attract shame. But the one who, who does well, you can't, if you dishonor him, you will give those kind of people double honor. So number one, you start out by honoring God. You honor his word. You honor the Lord by giving from the, from the first fruit of the increase and with your substance. You honor your father and your mother. And then you honor also by giving. By respecting them and obeying them within the ambit of the law. And number four, you honor men. Number five, you give double honor to elders. Especially elders in the church who labor in the word and in doctrine. With breakthrough and increase comes honor. You start out to break through by understanding that the law of honor is one of the governing laws of life. When you see people who are the topmost top, they are men that understand honor. When you listen to Baba Deboe, you will know that this is an honorable man because he honors, if you, if he's, you pass, pass, um, Bishop, um, Bishop, well, look, he was telling the story of how his private secretary called him. And he was saying, yes, ma. He said, no. I'm the secretary. He said, I know, ma. They understand some things about life. Because the more you honor people, the greater honor you attract. And also, it's a sign of humility. When you are humble, you are positioning yourself to be lifted. I want you to bow your head this morning and just begin to pray. I want you to begin to ask the Father. That you amplify this truth in my heart. Bring me to the place of perfect understanding. Even of your word this season. Bring me to the place of perfect understanding. Even of your word this season. In Jesus name. 
Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Uh, it's time to give our offering. I'd like us to uh, put together our offering. If you're listening to us, I'd like to just call out the account details. It's Holy Hill Church, GT Bank. Account number is 16 5317 As we put together our offering, the Bible says, Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. If you're ready, I'd like you to just bow down your head and begin to declare over yourself that this is the least that I will ever be in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the privilege you've given us to sow our seeds. This morning, we ask that you receive them. Let them come up to you as a sweet-smelling savor. Let this return to us in a harvest of things money can buy and of things money cannot buy. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, so um, please let us, let us um, keep to the um, COVID-19 protocol for churches um, as we try to just operate with the ambit of, of the law. Let's be law abiding. And please, as you're leaving the service, you go out through this door. Um, that is how we go. You're coming through this door. You go out through this door. And please don't socialize. Once the service is over, just go out through this door. Go to your car, drive home, and you can be calling your friends on the phone. Don't hug people. Don't shake people. Don't get excited because the camera is watching you. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's be on our feet this morning. Let's take our declaration together. Let's take our declaration together. It is really good and exciting to finally have human beings with me in church. Hallelujah. Say unto them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. So let's take it together in Jesus' name. June 2020 opens to me in color, glory, and splendor. This June, I experience the best of everything. This June, the good hand of God rests upon me to perfect all that concerns me. This June, factors align for me. Resources such as I need come unto me from the north and from the south. Provisions such as I need come to me from the east and the west. In this month of June, angels are assignment for me. Helpers of destiny come to me and burden bearer come to me. This June, I am provided for and I'm marvelously helped by God. The, the Lord has supplied all my needs according to his riches and glory. And Psalm 23 becomes my reality. In the name of Jesus, relationship such as I need come into my life. This June, I declare that I triumph by the blood, the blood that speaks better things concerning me, the blood silence, the voice of the adversary, the blood atoned for me. The blood speaks increase and blessing upon all that concerns me. This June, time and chance align for me, and time and space collapse for me. This June is my best month yet. New pages open to me. New chapters open to me. New relationships come into my life in this month of June. June 2020 is my month of supernatural lifting. As you have declared, so shall it be for you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are kept in all your ways. The angels of God keep you going out and you're coming in. Disaster is far from you and from your family this week. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you.